Good morning again. <laughs> what? The struggle is real. The struggle is real. So that's an ironic saying, right? Um, somebody might say to somebody, um, my fingernail is broken and I really need a manicure. And somebody might say, man, the struggle is real. But sometimes the struggle is really real. And that's what we are going to be looking at today. Please pray with me. Spirit of God, as we receive your word, open our eyes to your justice and open our ears to your judgment and open our hearts to your love. We pray in the name of the one who gives us new life. Amen. Amen. We're reading from Luke 10, beginning with verse 25. You know the story, so try to listen with new ears. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them, and then he put him on his own animal brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Jesus used simple stories called parables to teach about the kingdom of God. The thing is that parables are rarely simple. This not so simple parable is known as the Good Samaritan, and it connects eternal life with neighbor love. The phrase eternal life doesn't mean just physical life after death. It doesn't just mean life in heaven. It means life right now the way God created it to be. The way God created life to be is hopeful, fruitful, and joyful. I'm sure you could come up with some more words, but I think that pretty much summarizes a lot of the gist of it. Hopeful, fruitful, and joyful. The parable starts out by recognizing that life, as God intended at creation, is broken. There are people who are not hopeful or fruitful or joyful, and due to a lot of forces, including our own selfishness, our own sin, our own blindness, life can be sometimes hurtful and harmful and dreadful and There are situations where the struggle is really real. And so today, a faceless, nameless man is traveling down that road from Jerusalem to Jericho where it is very steep. It's a very steep uh, road down in a very short distance, many, about a thousand feet. It is windy, as you must do when you're making a road like that, and it is a place where bandits have taken up uh, space where they are going to be around the corner sometimes. 
And everyone knows that you take your chances when you drive along this road. And today, that struggle is real for this man. In the process of robbing him, did you hear that the bandits removed all his clothing? I guess they either stole it or because in the process of robbing him, they wanted to make sure he was well beaten. And they left him well beaten and half dead when they ran away. And half dead is a very strange word, I think. I'm not even sure what half dead exactly is. It's the only time it's used in this Bible, in the New Testament, half dead is here. And half dead, we realize, is not hopeless. But it is absolutely helpless. And so Jesus presents this real-life struggle that maybe almost everybody can relate to, maybe not that particular struggle, but the way it feels to be broken and hurting and maybe even feeling half dead. And someone within the sound of my voice this morning may need to hear that, may need to hear that acknowledgement that life can be that way, that maybe you have felt beaten, broken, hurting with wounds, even half dead. It could be a health problem. It could be financial, legal, spiritual. Perhaps the source of the hurt you have felt has been a person, disappointment in a person or a whole people or your own repeated mistakes. Every morning you get up and say, why did I do that again? Conflict in your family or in the church. Maybe especially this week, despair about the state of our nation with a whole week of violence where it seems like the security of people is getting more tenuous. Pain and brokenness can make us feel half dead. And so in this parable, God sends help for the one who is hurt, wounded, and broken. God sends help. Indeed, God sends help from this unexpected neighbor. You heard how the neighbors the man might have expected to help passed him by. Those were the ones maybe we expect to help us that aren't a help at all. The priest and the Levite, maybe they should have known better. They should have had more love. They should have, had, they have a profession of love. But maybe they had good reasons to walk on by. The most common reason we read in scholars is that these men, uh, according to religious laws, couldn't touch dead people because it was contaminated. And so maybe they didn't come close enough to see he was only half dead. He still had the breath of life, even though it was only a whisper. Maybe they were brought up to believe God helps those who help themselves. And maybe they were waiting for him to at least show some initiative before they would help him. Or maybe they reasoned that everything happens for a reason. And maybe there's a reason this man is lying there naked, broken, bruised, beaten, and half dead. Or maybe they whispered to themselves as they walked on by, better safe than sorry. But if you're the man who is half dead, who is hurting, it really doesn't matter what the reason was. The thing is, you're still lying there, and you still have a little hope, but you are definitely helpless. And then God sends this unexpected helper in the form of a neighbor he never imagined he had. He's the first one to come near, and he's the Samaritan. And Samaritans are... Again, they worship God, one God, but they worship in a completely different way in different places with rituals that Jews do not find clean or appropriate. And so the two groups don't interact. There is hatred sometimes. And so as the man squints up and looks maybe in the sun to see who is that 
He knows because he can see it's a Samaritan. Jesus says the Samaritan has pity for him. It's an unfortunate translation of the the Greek word in English into English because the word translated everywhere else is compassion. And it's used for the man who welcomes back the prodigal son. It's used for when Jesus looks out over the crowds and he feels compassion. And compassion from that Greek word is that feeling inside of your gut where you you feel it. You know how your uh, child or grandchild falls down and bruises a knee? Do you feel something inside your gut, like kind of like a charge? Compassion, this Greek word is like that. You feel what that person's feeling, at least a little bit, and your gut reaches out and wants to love. So the Samaritan feels this. The Samaritan is the neighbor, and he dresses the man's wounds. He bandages him up. He puts him on his animal, and he takes his animal with the man on it to an inn where he can heal and rest and get better. And he leaves money so that he will get better, and the man at the end will treat him well. The man who was hurt on the road, don't you think his family was amazed later when he told him, a Samaritan helped me? They were probably like, no. I'm sure you're wrong. No. He helped me. Jesus says, go and do likewise. And so as we prepare to come to the table, I wonder if the main message is to think about the things we have done to show neighborly love and to do better. And that is a great message. But maybe as we prepare to come to the table, God is saying something else to us that's really important today. Maybe God is saying, I know you're one of the wounded ones. I know you're one of the ones who has felt or is feeling beaten up, wounded, hurting, maybe sometimes even half dead. Maybe you're one of the ones who has been on that road from Jericho, from Jerusalem to, Je- to Jerusalem, where it's windy and steep and it's easy to fall or be taken down. Perhaps you've come to church today not yet feeling hopeless, but feeling a little bit helpless about something that's going on or has gone on in your life. Our parable reminds us that God sends neighbors who come with heavenly love and they may not be the ones that we expect. It might not even be the kind of help that we wanted to get. It may be the face when we squint and look up that we weren't even looking for. So the question is, maybe as we come to the table, are we open to seeing or even noticing the proximity or the nearness of these neighbors we didn't expect God to send to us with neighborly love? Will we welcome that when it is given? Or have we not yet even admitted we are helpless? Have we not yet even agreed with God that we need help? Are we still trying to do it ourselves? Are we waiting because we might be embarrassed to need help? And especially not the help from the person we were waiting for. This not so simple parable seems to peel back a layer of God's truth. And that's showing us that the path to wholeness may involve the strangers, the neighbors that God sends that we didn't expect, that are right there in proximity offering us neighborly love. If you're wounded today or have found yourself wounded or have a loved one who is wounded, 
start thinking about who those neighbors might be that God has sent or is sending in your midst. Maybe you're overlooking one of them. Maybe this is a message for our nation. Maybe if neighbors saw neighbors as loved ones, things would be different. Of course, there's something so broken that no human help can help. Not much. And so Jesus invites us to come to the table admitting when those things are going on that we need his compassion more than anything. We need the compassion of the risen Lord who went to the cross refusing to return violence for violence on our behalf so that we could learn love. Centuries ago, the great Reformation theologian Martin Luther, um, Martin Luther, the one I heard about in my childhood as a Lutheran, interpreted this parable to say that Jesus Christ is the Good Samaritan. Jesus is the one with the unexpected way of loving that we didn't realize was coming into our midst. Jesus is the one when we are completely broken or when we realize that we have sinned or we realize we need help, picks us up and puts us on his animal and brings us to the end where he pours grace after grace over us until we start feeling more healthy. And one day we will be all the way in the presence of God. Perfect. So come to the table. When you walk up to the table, or when it is brought to you, come as you are. Because that's the only way you will be fully present. Come as you are, whether you're a helpless traveler or a loving neighbor, or both. Come as you are to the Lord of new creation, the God of second chances, the Lord that gives birth to new joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Amen.